Yeah. I mean, I love it because it can replace your expenses and get, you, you know, for my goal and the goal of my students is to get to the point where work is optional. I'm not telling you to retire early. I'm not telling you to quit. If you like your job, well, think about if if you have if you have to go to work, that mindset versus you get to go to work because you want to and you don't need the money. Just think about how you would treat your patients, how you treat your customers, how you would treat your employees, or if you are an employee, how will you treat others? It's just a, a different way of thinking. In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, if you are one of those highly paid individuals, meaning you're out there in the corporate world and you're just, you're really crushing it. Like you've got a high, let's say it's six figure salary. You maybe even pushing seven figure salary, or maybe you don't, maybe you just have this job and you're really trying to figure out ways to minimize that tax burden that you've got in yourself, but you're not really sure where to begin. You've, you're tired of paying taxes to the point where it's like, why do I even go to work sometimes? Right? So that's where the conversation is going to lead to today. We're going to dive into a lot of financial education with a conversation that we're going to have with Dr. Jeff Anzalone. So Dr. Jeff is coming to us from the Baton Rouge, Louisiana area, if I'm not mistaken, Monroe, Louisiana, which is going to be a fantastic conversation. We're going to get dive deep into talking about some financial education pieces, investing, the key components of leverage, mindset, all different kinds of things. This is going to be a super fun conversation. So about Dr. Jeff. Dr. Jeff is a periodontist who teaches a unique prescription for success centered around mindset shifts. Through his platform, DebtFreeDoctor.com, he empowers clients to elevate their health, maximize their wealth with real estate, enrich their relationships to give them the life they want. As I mentioned, he's the creator of DebtFreeDoctor.com and actually DebtFreeDoctor, just for clarification, it's actually DebtFreeDR. Just want to clarify that up front. We'll definitely have that in the show notes, but it's DebtFreeDoctor.com where he focuses on helping you with a growth mindset, managing your health effectively, and smart real estate investments. His mission is to guide you in taking control of your finances and achieving financial freedom, which is exactly what I try to talk about and promote here on the Rich Mind Podcast. The Just the title alone of my podcast, the, the rich part of that, right, comes with the financial education piece, but then it also comes back to the mindset, which is why I'm super excited to bring Dr. Jeff here on the podcast episode today. So without further ado, Dr. Jeff, please come on, share some wisdom with us. How can we use this leverage in real estate and investing and, and try to reach this financial freedom that we're all trying to get to. I'm really glad you could join us here on the episode today. Yeah. Thank, thanks for having me. L looking forward to uh, our conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. So take a few minutes. I went through a lot of the high level bullet points as far as a lot of the things you're up to and things like that, but share a little bit more about your story. Tell us where you are, where you've been kind of, uh, you know, just give us a little bit more texture as far as who you are and, and what you're about these days? Yeah, I'll, I think the best place to start will be two weeks before I got out of my dental residency. I was supposed to come back here in Louisiana with a group practice. If, if you have been to professional school, medical school, dental school, law school, you know, unfortunately, they don't teach you anything about the two most important things, how to run your business or practice and money. Kind of Kind of odd, right? And because that partnership fell apart two weeks before I graduated, it was left my wife and I with a two month old who's now 19 years old now and $300,000 in student loan debt. Plus we'd already bought a house, but the worst part was no patients, no money coming in, didn't know how to run a practice. It would have been different if this was maybe a, a year before, but two weeks before was rough. And that really set me back. I'd, I'd grown up with a, a scarcity limited mindset from my parents, nothing against them. That was just how they were raised. And back then, you know, my grandparents and great grandparents came from Sicily and, you know, the old Italian way and, you know, everything was, was very uh, limited, work hard for your money, save, scrimp, save, 
very frugal. Again, that's, that's just, it is what it is. So I heard that my whole life, you know, you have to, Hey, can we go on this vacation or can we do this or that? And you know, that costs too much. We can't afford that. So I was thinking, okay, well then I, I guess it's limited, you know, make sure that you save everything you have. Don't take any risk. And when, when I was getting the student loan debt in, in dental school, my residency, I didn't really, of course I didn't like it, but it really wasn't that big of a deal because I was like, well, I'm going to have a good job to pay it back. And then when this happened, I really went back not only in scarcity mode, but like survival mode. And when I was in high school, college, I had a lawn service. I actually went back to people that I used to mow the yard and, and asked them, could I start mowing the yards again hmm. at that time? You know, talking about a humbling experience. I was the most well-trained yard guy in the country. I can, I can assure <laughs> you that, but you know what you got to do what you got to do to, to put food on the table and, and pay the bills. And at that time, Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman were like the two big financial people. This was Oh five Oh six. I was a Dave Ramsey person, uh, still, still listen to some of his stuff today. And, and it was just like, I was just looking for people to help me. And luckily I found a guy here to, to, to help me rent a play. I could rent space from him, share his equipment, share his staff. I'd have to take out more debt. He was going to teach me how to run a practice. Hmm. Well, I had that taken care of. I, then I followed my wife and I followed the Dave, Dave Ramsey, his seven baby steps and the, the debt snowball, you pay off your smallest to largest debts, starting with the smallest one, you know, put all the money in there and then and roll it over and so on and so forth. So uh, it, it felt, it felt pretty good to have like a plan, you know, to dig out from under this mess took, took us about seven and a half years to, to pay off everything, including that first house. So that, that felt great. But, but it was almost like, okay, now what? That, that feeling of greatness lasted for like a week, you know? So I just thought, okay, well, I'm going to be like everybody else. Work till you're 65, 70, and life goes on, okay? Then about probably three years later, we were snow skiing, and my kids were six and eight at the time. And unfortunately, I fell, injured my hand, and that really got me thinking, well, wait a minute, it's kind of hard to treat patients without your hands. Right. Never thought about that before. Yes. I had disability insurance, but that that's not going to be enough to, to, you know, continue the lifestyle that we had and all that. So I knew I had to do something more for financial security. It, it wasn't like I was going out and, and looking for other ways to make money to buy stuff. It was like, if I, if I can't work, well, what am I going to do? And I, and I started a deep dive on YouTube, the internet articles, and really to sum up everything, if you just put it all together, two things stood out. This is like really wealthy people. They had real estate in their portfolio. I had zero at that time. And they had multiple streams of income. And once I started getting around these people at meetings, at masterminds, it was, it's just funny because you ask them, what, what do they do for a living? And we're used to people going, well, I am a blank. I am a doctor. I am a dentist. I am a attorney, accountant, whatever. They never say that. It's always, I own. I own a bunch of businesses. I own real estate or I have a portfolio. And, and it was just, it's, it was just odd because I've just really never been around that type of people before. So I knew at that point I had to focus on investing in real estate for multiple income streams. And, and I thought really the only way to do it was I had to go out and, and buy a home, rent it out or Airbnb it or whatever. And little did I know, the more that I got into it, there's so many different ways to, to uh, invest. And, and there's passive ways to where you can continue doing what you know best, whatever your career, because think about it, you spent all this time, money and energy getting your degree, you know, getting your profession, that's your biggest wealth building tool. And then to take that, instead of putting all the excess money in the stock market, like I was used to do before, now I'm putting it into cash flowing assets that are replacing our expenses now, instead of 
you know, when I'm 60, 65, because how does that help me now? It doesn't, you know, how's a 401k help you now? If you're before you're 60, you know, it doesn't. So that, that, you know, that's, that's the, the, the short version of, of that, but that, that's how I got in the, I guess the space that I am now. But that's a great version. I love that. So you have like that epiphany moment. And I think we can all relate to that. You have that moment where it's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? How am I going to do X, Y, Z? Yours was obviously replace your income uh, from your practice. But it's like, then what? I loved how you said that. You said, well, then now what? It's like, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? So as you start going down that path and you realize, let's, let's unpack that a little bit as far as I think that one thing that people can understand that there are different types of income. Can you go into that a little bit as far as we have your active income and I would like for you to share, you know, the different types and the importance of each, right? It's like you mentioned about having multiple streams of income and that's importance as far as building wealth. But that comes along with understanding the differences between the income types. Uh, and I think that could be super valuable if people can kind of catch what that exactly is, if they're, if they're unaware of what that even means. Yeah. And I, I think most people understand what active income is. That's, that's what we trade our, t- our time for, you know, you trade, you trade time for money. Well, that money is your active income. Unfortunately, the, what we don't understand is the amount of taxes that we have to pay on that income. Nobody ever tells about that. Active income is your highest tax. You know, people say, what tax bracket are you in? And typically they're talking about your active income, your W-2 income, 1099 income, whatever. And, and again, something else that I learned about these wealthy people, Warren Buffett, Donald Trump, Jeff Bezos, all of these people, yes, they have multiple streams of income, but guess what? The majority of their income is not coming from their active income. That's why they pay little to no taxes. So they just, they just understand the tax code and people, we, we don't take the time to learn it. If you just, if you would just step back and take time to learn it and then also get, get good track tax strategists, tax accountants, whatever to teach you and to guide you, if, if you don't want to learn it yourself, that is so much more important than working for 30 or 40 years. What, what was the, the, what was the saying about, was it Abe Lincoln or whatever about chopping down a tree? You know, if you got four hours, spend, you know, three hours and 45 minutes sharpening your ax Mm -hmm. instead of just going and just, just wearing yourself out. And it's kind of like that, you know, it's, it's taking the time to learn how to do it smart, how to do it correctly before you just start doing that. And I, one of the people, one of the books, books that I, that really helped me was rich dad, poor dad, and specifically the cash flow quadrant that, that was just like an eye opener to me. And, you know, he breaks, he breaks down the quadrant into, um, if people, if people are watching this, I've got a whiteboard I can show you real quick, but you've got sure. E and S on one side and that's, that's the employee and, and self-employed. Well, this is where most people are. Here's the business owner and investor. Well, most people are employees, they work for somebody. And then most people are either, you know, self-employed. Well, you're trading your time for money that you're, you're taxed the highest self-employed. You're even more because you're paying self-employment tax. And we never even think about how we're making money or how we're taxed or anything like that. So once you start focusing on other streams of income from rental property, from royalties, from, from dividends, from capital gains, all of these are typically from a, not only are tax lower, but if you, if you set it up properly, you, you don't have to continuously trade time for money to do it. And the most important thing, at least for me, as I get older is my time. Mm. If, if you could do something once and that's it, and then you get paid for it instead of you have to go work shifts, work hours, work, you know, you have to work instead of, you know, the other way around. So talk about the discipline it takes to get invested, to get engaged, to, so a lot of times I think people have the idea, okay, I hear that and I understand how the importance of doing that as far as getting into real estate, getting investments, starting a business, those types of things, but how you can get distracted, meaning you're not 
taking the action consistently to see the results. And so when they don't see the results happen within, you know, you put a time frame on it, they'll walk away from it and not necessarily see the fruits of their labor. Talk about that a little bit as far as how long it actually takes and the discipline it takes to keep and be consistent as far as to see the results. Yeah, and I think it starts with the book Simon Sinek wrote, Start With Why. I had a really strong why, you know, with with hurting my hand, needing to find a way to provide for my family. And and I think that that's the first place to start. Because if you don't have a strong enough why, think about the overweight people. How many overweight people do you know that have lost weight that didn't have a strong why? Probably none. It's probably, oh, I started getting chest pain or my doctor told me I'm going to have a heart attack if I don't lose weight. So it's that. That's what keeps them going. Are they going to fail along the way? Yeah, but then they've got that in the back of their mind. You know, oh, I just ate a gallon of ice cream, but I I got to get back on my diet because I don't want to have a heart attack. And I think, I think that's 99% of people, if you ask them what they want, they can't answer it. That's like the hardest question to ask. Like, what do you want? What do you want out of life? Well, I don't know. Well, then how can you do anything? How can you make goals? You know, the people have problems in three main areas. Like if you're having a problem right now, I can guarantee you it's in three main areas, your health, your wealth, or your relationships. That's it. And you should specifically make goals in those three relationships three categories, health, wealth, and relationships, make your goal. Maybe you want to have a better relationship with your spouse or your, your, with your, with your kids. Maybe you want to lose some weight. Maybe you want extra streams of income, whatever it is, figure out the why behind it, then, then map it out. But most people won't, won't do that. I just kind of let life happen to them instead of the other way around. It's that taking control. And I read that in the very beginning about yourself, right? It's getting in the driver's seat, understanding that these things are happening to you and around you, but then taking control and making different decisions based on a different reality that you want to see in the future, which is so impactful and so important. So you've mentioned a couple of times as far as like, so the idea that I've got is like team members, right? Investing, real estate, breaking free from the corporate or the job grind requires you the ability to kind of acquire the right team members to put in place and how important that piece is as well. Can you talk about the difference between when you're, when you're an employee or, or, you know, working for yourself even, right? You don't necessarily need an accountant, an attorney, you know, obviously the team member on the ground with the real estate investment, right? So can you talk a little bit about how the importance of kind of the bridging that mindset gap from thinking that I have to do it all by myself to bringing in some team members and actually, you know, leveraging them and their ex- expertise as well? Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking over here on, on the, oh, here it is right here on my bookshelf. So this, this book will address that and, and it, it completely changed my thinking. This was only maybe like three or four years ago. So I'll give you a perfect example of my YouTube channel. I, uh, I had started a blog maybe eight years, seven, eight years ago. And after three or four years, I started noticing that I, the way that I get my information is YouTube, hmm. but yet I'm writing all these articles. So I'm thinking, well, well, I got at that time I had like 300 something articles. I said, well, why don't I start repurposing those into YouTube videos? But I kept making excuses. I kept, I kept asking, how do I start a channel? How do I, how do I film them? How do I edit them? How do I make those little thumbnails and you know, how do I come up with the title and this and that? I'm, I'm laughing because I do all that myself. Right. So I get it. Yeah. This yeah. Is just, there's a lot of steps to it that you really just take for granted. Yeah. I hear it really you. is. So, we were 2019, we were at a, a summer vacation in Montana and I read this book, who, not how Dan Sullivan, and Ben Hardy. And it was just like, that's it. I'm asking all of these how questions and they're like, that's not what you do. You know, how do you make the thumbnail? How do you start it? How do you edit it? You just find a who. And, and to answer your question, like, how do I learn about taxes or how do I learn about real estate? You just find a who that has already done it. That's it. And then people are going to say, well, I don't, I don't want to do that or I don't want to pay for that or whatever. Well, then you're never going to do it because that is going to save you so much time. Time is more important. 
And, you know, so for instance, if you, let's say you, let's just take YouTube, for instance, let's say you pay somebody $30,000 for six months, just to, to get your channel up and going, just to start doing real good. Awesome. Instead, you take three years to do it. What do you think is going to happen in those three years? I mean, you, you, don't you think if you make a $30,000 investment, you can definitely recoup that probably 10 times over, you know, but that's how people think, you know, pe people still think, and, and, and I was still thinking I've got to mow my own yard because I did it growing up. My dad did it. And it's like, don't you think that your time is more valuable that two hours or hour or whatever, or you could go do what you want or go, or go make 10 times what you're paying the yard guy, but people, what is it? People, you know, pick up pennies to step over dollars or whatever that saying is, you know, it's just people. I mean, my, my dad still drives 15 minutes out of the way to go save five cents a gallon at Sam's where he could, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. But we just, we get so automated in our actions. We don't think about it. You know, and, and if you sat there and thought about it, okay, 20 gallon tank, even if it's 10 cents more a gallon, what is that? You know, two bucks or three bucks or whatever. It's like, you're driving all of that, you know, and it's, but, but in the, but when you think about it, oh yeah, I'm saving 10 cents a gallon. That sounds great. But when you're like, well, in the grand scheme of things, you're saving like two bucks, three bucks. Is it worth it? Is that 15 minutes there and 15 minutes back? Don't you think you could make more than three bucks in 30 minutes? But people don't think like that. And it's just a cycle. And then we, you know, we, we teach our kids like that, whether we tell them or just by our actions and it's just a cycle. Love that. I see that all the time. I, I use that gas analogy a lot in stories around my house, right? It's just math. People don't do them. It's just simple math. Yeah. And you're right to save a, a couple nickels. I always say a couple nickels, right? It's a little bit more than that, but yeah, just to save a few cents to drive that far. Yeah. I understand that, that story. That's, that's super good. So and, let's and, dive and like in. the, the worst is I hear people and I used to do this. My parents do it. I got older people that work for me. They'll let's say they want to go buy something like a pair of shoes. Perfect example. I want to buy a pair of athletic shoes. They will go drive 30 minutes to the mall, deal with what goes on in the mall, have to deal with all that. <laughs> and, and, you know, go find a parking spot. And then you, you, you go there nine times out of 10, they don't have the shoe and, and that's two hours wasted. And I can go to Zappos and have my shoe here tomorrow. <laughs> and it's the same price. And guess what? If it doesn't fit, you can ship it back for free. UPS will pick. It's just my, my time. And, and, I, and, and, and I'll tell them this, I'll, I'll walk them through it. It's like, and it's a mindset thing. It's like, no, I, I've got to go there and look at it. Okay. Keep being stupid. You know, <laughs> it's just, it, there's nothing. And, and there's so many things in my life where people have told me, and I, I was the same thing. I was just stupid. I was just closed minded. And then once I really started thinking about it, I'm like, man, that's the stupidest thing ever. I can't believe I'm still doing that, you know? And, and, um, it's just, I guess I'm more focused on my time and I teach people that look, your, your time is just so valuable. You can make money doing anything or whatever, but it's time you can't make more of it. If you can, let me know. We'll start a business together. You know? Yeah, that would be very, a very, very wealthy adventure. That's for sure. So let's go a little bit deeper into that mindset piece. So I would assume that with your trainings and even with your, even your close proximity, you mentioned about different, some family members and things like that. I, I have situations like that as well. Like you'll have a conversation and you'll hear the feedback that you're getting back in that conversation. And you just start to question. It's like, where is that even coming from? I was having a conversation with my wife earlier today and we were talking about some of the uh, limited beliefs, lack mindset ideas that we've been brought up with that we just believe that are true it's very difficult to, to break. That's the kind of the point that I want to take that as far as like, how do you, when you're working with somebody, help them see a different future, a different outcome, different potential, whether it's through investments or even just that mindset shift to really believe that they can actually achieve something greater than what they've been stuck with as far as these, these beliefs and these stories. Well, it's, it's to get, it's, it's to get them to, to tell me what they want. What are they looking for? 
And, and most of the time it's very vague. Let's take passive income, for instance. Most of the time people contact me and, oh yeah, I saw your YouTube video. I heard about your friend and I wanted to set up a call with you or whatever. And I said, okay, well, what do you want? Well, this passive income stuff sounds pretty good. So yeah, I want some passive income <laughs> and that's it. And I'm like, okay, well, why do you want that? Uh, you know, I, I think it'll be, I think it would be good to have, okay, well, how much do you want? Uh, I don't know. Well, when do you want to have it by? I, I, I don't know. So once we, once we start working through those questions and, and can get something specific, you know, maybe like $10,000 a month of passive income coming in within 12 months, I mean, that that's pretty specific. And then from there we can work backwards. And then typically while, as we're talking about how to do it, that's when I find little, you know, times as we're having our conversation, maybe they'll mention something like the, the gas station thing. Maybe they'll say something like that. And that's when I can start talking to them about options because that's the main thing, because we're brainwashed that we have to work until we're 65 or 70. At least I was, and we had to put in a 401k and heaven forbid, if you want to retire and the stock market's down, then you just keep working. And that was my only option. That, I mean, even Dave Ramsey, he still talks about, you know, invest in your 401k and just keep working after paying out of debt. And for 95% of the population, that's probably what people should do because people just aren't smart with money. And if you just tell them something basic, they're, they're better off doing that than just being on their own. Okay. Let's just be honest about it. But for the 5% or, or less that, that really have that, go-getter gene or entrepreneur gene or whatever in them, and they want more, then it, it, it does take a mindset shift and it, and it just takes being very specific. I'm no expert on this, but typically when I listen to somebody and help them out, as we work backwards, we can see maybe where that, that thing that's holding them back or, or limitation or belief came from and work through it. And I always like to give people options. I, I never tell somebody you have to invest in this asset class. You have to do this. It's like, Hey, here's two or three options. What's best for you? Because what's, you know, you better than I know you, you, you mean, you can hear that perfect, perfect example, Robert Kiyosaki, Dave Ramsey, to, two totally different people, but you know what? You can take bits and pieces from both and you can apply it to your life. Maybe, Let's just say you're just, you can never see yourself working. You have to work for somebody. You have to be an employee and you like safety and security. Well, well then do more what Dave Ramsey says, but you can also take some things from Kiyosaki, like investing in assets that pay for your liabilities or something like that versus somebody that's like, I don't want to work for anybody. I want to be my own boss. I want to travel the world. You know, so you can take bits and pieces from people because you know what's best for you versus anybody else. Does that make sense? It does. It does. So it's taking, you just said it, bits and pieces. So I've learned from a lot of my philosophy is centered around what, what Robert teaches. But to throw and say Dave Ramsey is completely wrong and this, I don't think that's quite accurate. It's just a, a philosophy. It's just a difference. You can take bits and pieces of both of them. And if you apply them, you can actually achieve greater things a lot faster than doing neither, right? Uh, for sure. So let's assume that we're speaking to that. You mentioned 5% or even less. Those people that are out there, they're like, okay, they're understanding what we're saying. They're like, yeah, I want a piece of that passive income, but I don't even know where to begin. I know your area of expertise is in the real estate realm. You talk about there is different asset classes and we'll, we'll leave that maybe for a different episode. But uh, let's go down the rabbit trail as far as let's talk about real estate and why it is such a great asset class, uh, what the benefits are, what you can really gain from it. We've talked about the income piece, but there's also different components to it as well. That's super powerful that I would just love you to kind of uh, dive a little deeper on the real estate piece. Yeah, I mean, I love it because it can replace your expenses and get, you know, for my goal and the goal of my students is to get to the point where work is optional. I'm not telling you to retire early. I'm not telling you to quit. If you like your job, well, think about if if you have if you have to go to work, that mindset versus you get to go to work because you want to and you don't need the money. Just think about how you would treat your 
patients, how you treat your customers, how you treat your employees, or if you are an employee, how will you treat others? It's just a, a different way of thinking. And that's, that's what real estate allows you to do is getting that extra stream of income in. Typically that extra stream of income, it's, you, you typically don't even pay taxes on it. Or if you do, it's very low versus your active income. You're, you're paying the you know, 40, 50% of your, of your taxes, depending on what state you live in, a high tax state, it's tax benefits, the appreciation. So let's say you have a million dollars in your 401k and you got a million dollars in real estate. Well, let's say you want to, you want to, you want to live on a hundred grand a year. Okay. As you're, as you're pulling off a hundred thousand dollars a year, from your mutual funds, guess what? You're, you're getting taxed. You're, you're paying a capital gains tax, right? You're, you're, you're paying tax. What if the stock market's down? Well, that million dollars is even lower. All right. It could go up, it can go down, it, it fluctuates. So you're, you're, you're drawing down your potential on your, you're drawing down on your principal. You're always in the back of your mind thinking, do I have enough to retire or am I going to run out of money? Versus a million dollars in real estate, guess what? In general, real estate goes up in value when, you know, especially if you ask somebody, well, how many houses have you lived in? If they say, well, two or three, ask them if the price is going up or down each mm -hmm. time you buy a house. More than likely it's going up, even just two or 3% on the low end. So that million dollars is going to appreciate. And, and it's so funny, once you start looking at what all the fear mongers are talking about, about, oh, inflation is so high and, and, you know, all of this stuff. And, and it's just like, well, if you have, if you have something you can control like real estate, you just raise the rent and they think, well, oh, that's so wrong. You, you can't do that. Okay. Well, what do restaurants do when food prices go up? They raise their food prices. What is, what is the majority of merchants doing right now with their credit cards? They're passing the credit card fee along to you, right? The 3% because that's how they keep up with inflation. They're not trying to make any more money. They're just keeping up with inflation. Well, you can do that with real estate. You can, you can raise the rent, keep it, keep it what it should be in your area, but you can, you can keep up with inflation again, protecting that million dollars that's giving you the cash flow. So the, the likelihood of you running out of money is, is very low. Is it still, can you still lose money? Absolutely. But once you just start learning about that, it's just, to me, it's so it's, it's a lot less stress on me and on other people that we're teaching this to versus, you know, just everything is on the stock market, you know, and, and, um, it's, it's just, we've been brainwashed and, what a great profession to be as a financial advisor. You make money, whether your clients make money or not. I mean, that's a great, so it's like, if you're a pro <laughs> athlete, I don't even have to win. I still get paid. Okay. Well, I'm just going to do the least amount of work. I'm still going to get paid, you know? So that's, that's a, that's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure your, your patients don't, wouldn't appreciate that very much, would they at all? No, <laughs> not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Not showing up to actually complete the task that they're there for. Yeah. It's a, it's a completely different world, which is fascinating when you really think about it. It's, it's crazy. Un That's true. Unbelievable. So as far as the, uh, leverage in terms of getting some leverage for people, right? So going back to the idea of doing it all for yourself, Meaning if you have the mindset of going to work, working hard, not really relying on anybody or anything else to kind of help you get and, and add some pieces of, of uh, some leverage, really some leverage in your life, how difficult it is to gain some, you know, that exponential growth in this wealth that you're trying to create through your passive income and that type of thing. Leverage is such a huge piece in terms of real estate and investing and that type of thing. I would love for you to kind of go into detail about that as well and how that's been beneficial for you. Yeah. And I made a YouTube video on it uh, a few weeks ago and, and I got the idea from, from a guy that, that I really like and I admire Myron Gold, Goldman. And he came up, he shot a video about how you can turn your yearly income into your monthly income. 
And when you first read that, you're like, oh yeah, like whatever. So if you make $500,000 a year, you can make $500,000 a month. Yeah. Right. But when he broke it down, it, it really resonated with me. And I, and I, um, also made a video talking about that and it just, he just put it in very simplistic terms because people are always saying you got to work hard for your money. You have to do this and that. And that's true to some extent, but as you get later on in life and you get more wiser, hopefully with experience, you understand that you can just work smarter than harder and, and be a, a much more profitable, have, you know, make more money or whatever. And he was talking about having a race. He had a guy that had like a leg brace who couldn't even run racing against somebody who was like an avid runner. Well, that wouldn't be fair, right? Who would win? It would of course be the guy that, that would run, not the leg brace guy. But what happens if, let's say they're going two miles. Well, what happens if the guy in the leg brace gets on a bike? Who's going to win? Well, of course the guy with, on the bike, right? It's because he is working smarter not having to exert as much energy. Plus he's got a leg brace on and, you, and he kept, he kept changing it. Well, you know, what if it, now they're not doing a bike? Now they're in a car. One of them's like a sports car and one of them is like an old beat up truck, you know? So again, you can, you can just keep changing the scenario, but there's, there's ways that you can work smarter than harder. And that's, you could use that pretty much with any, any leverage in life. And then we talked, we talked about this book, you know, who, not how finding a who, surrounding yourself and you know it's got that in the bible about surrounding yourself with counselors and people experts you know if if you win the lottery if you win 500 million dollars you better surround yourself with experts to how to protect it and keep it and all that versus just just blowing it you know and it, because if if you don't know how to handle fifty thousand dollars a year you think you're going to know how to handle fifty five hundred thousand dollars a year you're not unless unless you get people to that you can leverage in the different areas of your life to help you with that. So that's where just the idea of gaining some leverage in your life through other people, through other resources. Uh, we talk about good debt and bad debt as far as from the Kiyosaki standpoint, right? Understanding the difference that it's simply a tool. And if you don't, if you, you, you know, you being a doctor, right? You can use the tool as a scalpel or something to be very detrimental and hurt somebody, but then obviously you can use the tool to be very beneficial to somebody as well. And using that back and forth to definitely gain the benefits from that leverage is, is so powerful and to exponentially grow whatever you're working towards, whether it's an investment or even your, your passive income or even your relationships. It's, it's such a powerful tool. That's true. Fantastic. So let's say someone's out there today and they're thinking, okay, I need to learn more about real estate. So there's all kinds of things you mentioned about when you first got started, you, your main source of, of information came from, from YouTube. There's so many different people. There's so many different courses and trainings. And it's like, where do you even begin? I'm just curious if, you know, if you were to start today and I'm sure you're, you're coaching and teaching clients, obviously we want to have them come to you, the debt-free doctor as well. Right. But at the same time, if there are other resources, as far as for people to get the, the basics, right. There's a terminology that goes with investing. There's the benefits that we've talked about so far. Where are the best places for people to even begin that process to get started? That way they can start bridging this gap. First thing is if, if they know anybody in their area, maybe a family member, a friend, something like that, that that's, that's the quickest way. That's the easiest way. Most of the time, it's, you know, they'll, they'll be happy to help you. Somebody that maybe has an Airbnb or something. Hey, how'd you get started? Can I take you to lunch or dinner? And you'll, you'll learn more. Like I've, I've got a mentor here that's, that went to high school with my dad. He's a billionaire. And I learned more than a, in a two and a half hour meeting at his, at his office when he, he walked me through sort of his story than I did like in two years in college. And it's, it's amazing what you'll just learn from people's experience because there's just, there's so much information out there. It's like overwhelming and people that are overwhelmed and confused do what? Nothing. Right. right. Yeah. And that, that's where I would start. And then, and then again, figuring out what's, what your why is, what, what's going to get you going? What, what do you want this for? And, and then also you need to figure out, do you want to be active or passive? You may say, man, I work two jobs or I'm working 60 hours a week. There's no, there's no way I can deal with tenants or whatever. 
Well, then start looking at going the passive route, like real estate syndications. That's what I do. That's what I teach versus the active route. If you say, oh, you know, I've got time or I've got some resources that I could do it, then you may want to think about doing it yourself. But if you do it yourself and you don't know what you're doing, like make sure you have somebody that can walk you through, you know, how to do it. So you don't, you will make mistakes regardless, but it, at least it'll help mitigate that. So finding the people that have been down that road, the path mm -hmm. that you've been on, ask for some, maybe some of the turmoil they've been through, how they've, uh, you know, gotten navigated through different issues with uh, potentially, you know, bad debt or bad tenants or bad whatever relationships within the organization as well. Uh, talking about being a passive investor versus an active investor, uh, just throwing a little bit out there as far as being a general partner versus a limited partner. And that's just a decision. Number one, trying to get educated on what that even means. So if those are terms that you're not familiar with, those are the types of things you need to learn uh, the terminology of what it takes to become a successful investor. And so that would be a great place to start as well. So one last piece that I want to tie into, one thing I'm super passionate about is that younger generation. You mentioned you've got a 19-year-old son, I believe is what you said. Yeah, 19 and 17-year-old. 19 and 17-year-old. So it's that younger generation that's coming up. It's, you've mentioned it a few times. We've, we've, we've been brainwashed. Our generation has been brainwashed thinking there's lack and you can't do this and you can't do that. I'm just curious what you're trying to do and helping with that younger generation, your family, right? trying to encourage them to look at life completely different than what maybe what you and I were brought up to believe and think. Uh, yeah. Just curious on what you would encourage young folks to think about. Uh, maybe they're in college or maybe they're about to go to college or maybe they choose not to go to college. Right. So anyways, I'll just kind of, that was kind of a broad statement, but at the same time, curious on what you're thinking about for that younger generation. Yeah. You know, I'm always talking to them about things or asking them questions talking to them about work, what, what do they think about money or work? And whenever their friends are over asking them questions too, and just, just listen, it's just funny just to kind of see how, it, you know, some of their different mindsets or beliefs about things. And, um, I, I wish whenever I was growing up, cause I was around some really wealthy families, their, their dads would have just asked questions or, or whatever. I mean, I didn't know anything back then, but it, I just want to get involved in the process. And I had a, a kid over the other day that said he wanted to go to law school. And I said, okay, you ever thought about doing real estate law? What is that? Hmm. I said, you know, every time you buy a property or a house, you have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. Yeah. Well, guess what? You're the one that issues that and you make a lot of money. And I, and I said, guess what? You don't even have to be there. You get people working for you to do all your work. He said, really? I've never heard about that. So just, <laughs> just put that in the back of their mind, just little things like that. And, but, you know, let, let them figure it out themselves. But if you never say anything to them, then they're just going to do what everybody else does and, and get really bad with money and stay in debt. And that's what it is. So it's just offering that inspiration to try to get them to see life differently than what they've ever seen before. Right the following the herd kind of mentality, right. just doing what you're told, falling in line. Uh, it's tough sometimes to break free, to start trying to bridge the differences between whether it's entrepreneurship, whether you're investing, keeping your W-2 job or your daytime job or your profession, but then just changing that mindset is so crucial, so key. So I'm, I'm just, I appreciate you sharing that because that's, I work with that with my kids as well and just that younger generation. So hopefully that, that struck home for folks listening today. So take a few minutes as we start to bring this one in for a close. I would just love for you. To, I, we've shared a ton of wisdom so far, but I'm just curious if there's anything, another nugget of wisdom that you would, you know, that's on your heart to share that can inspire that person that is drowning in taxes or drowning in debt. And they're just not sure where to go. All the information, like you said, the information that's out there today is just, you know, gloom and doom. The world's coming to an end. All that stuff is just, you know, it's a lot of noise. But there's some hope and there's some inspiration as well. And I'm just mm -hmm. curious on, you know, maybe some things you might want to share with those types of people today. Well, more than likely you're in your position where you are because you lack something. A lot of times you can't see it and other people can, you know, kind of like I'm, I'm, my wife and I are helping our high school tennis team. My son plays tennis and these players are really good, but sometimes you can see something because you're watching it from the court versus they're watching it on the court and you should make little adjustments. So if, if, 
if um, you're having problems with debt or taxes or whatever, just find somebody to help you. And the best way to find somebody is, is to ask people who they recommend. You know, if you ask, let's say you ask five people who a good accountant is and five of the people mention and four of the people mention one particular group, well then, Hey, that's, that's somebody that I could interview. So just go look at, you know, if it's successful people and ask them who to use for this or this, you know, or whatever, if you need to lose weight or whatever, you know, ask, ask people who could train you or, or what type of diet or whatever there. I mean, it's just find somebody who has what you want and get help from them. That to me, that's, that's the cheat code in life. Because if not, you can go down the rabbit hole for months at a time, you know, on the internet and YouTube and come up and go, I'm no better off than when I started because now I'm just so confused, you know? So that, that's what I would recommend. That's awesome. And a great place to do that folks is debtfreedoctor.com. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, it's debt free and then DR for doctor. That's not the word spelled out, but make sure that when you're plugging that into the, the your web browser, we, we actually have both. Uh, so people, people were getting you? confused. So you could, you could do either one. Yep. Oh, I apologize. I didn't yeah. realize that. Thank you for clarifying. So forget everything I just said. It's debtfreedoctor.com. <laughs> That's a great place to go as a resource, right? If you're at the beginning stages of this journey to try to determine where to go, you know that something needs to change. You're just not exactly sure what and how or even who. That would definitely be a great resource to go to. I was visiting uh, his YouTube channel just today and the amount of resources and the amount of information provided there for free is amazing, is amazing. So Dr. Jeff, please share with us. I know I've, I've mentioned the website several times, but where are better places or even more places for people to reach out to you and connect with you to learn more about what your products and services are? And when you, when you go to the website, debtfreedoctor.com, as you said, the YouTube channel is on there to subscribe, but I'm more active on Instagram. So the Instagram link is on there too. So you could, you could direct message me. Um, I, I do shorter form content there real quick, you know, 60 seconds or less. So if people want to, to start there, then that'd be a great place to go. That'd be a fantastic place. So folks go out there, connect with Dr. Jeff on the internet, whether it's YouTube, whether it's his debtfreedoctor.com, whether it's Instagram, go out there and get yourself self-educated. A lot of times I feel like you, you get through school and you think you've done enough, but at the same time, if you're not learning the proper ways to apply the different levels of debt, the different levels of, of leverage and investing and all that type of thing, you're not going to reach the goals that you're looking for. You're going to get to this, you know, this proposed age of 65 or 70, and you're going to realize why, why am I not where I need to be? And it's because you didn't go through the process early enough to begin implementing these ideas and these strategies in your life to truly propel yourself to this dream life with this passive income. So Dr. Jeff, I appreciate you spending your time with us here on the episode today. It has been super fun. Yep. Had a, had a blast. Thanks for inviting me, Randy. Yeah, of course. So folks go out there, focus on being great, connect with Dr. Jeff on the internet and get yourself self-educated, learn some financial education. Uh, you'll be surprised that when you start implementing both the personal development along with the financial education, how quickly you can start seeing some fantastic results in your life. And I wish that for you going forward. So go out there, have a great day. I look forward to coming back with the next guest again very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.